All right. Hello, Fortinas, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to Ministry Revealed. It is August 14th, 2021. And I know we're biting our nails, watching for the day that the Lord will come and take his Gentile bride. Well, brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you we are still in it. And obviously we're still in it because we're still here. But we must understand, and we of all ministries must understand, with all of the revelation that's been given to us over the last four years, with all of the open books and the Gospels and, and the 14 years and the whole thing, we know there's going to be a deadline. We know there's a due-by date. What is one thing out of the many revelations this ministry has revealed what is the one thing that must begin that must take place before the 14 year starts well everybody would know you know even if you believe in a seven-year tribulation you would still say okay as a pre-trib i'm saying the pre-trib is the 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 rapture quote unquote has to happen first Okay, well, outside of knowing that, yes, the escape of the bride, the pre-trib like a rapture must happen first. Okay, we know why 2 Corinthians, without getting into all that again, but we know why 2 Corinthians says above 14 years for the rapture group, the one that is like a rapture that will go to the third heaven. We understand this above. We know from the revelation of the Holy Spirit, we were confirmed that it was a 50-day period before the 14 years. And when the 14 years were over, it would be the final jubilee. And in the last video, we even brought more revelation to that by showing how uh, the count of the jubilee when they understood the differences between non-accession and accession with kings when they came to power and how the house of Israel did it from the feast of, uh, uh, did it from Nisan in the spring feasts and how the house of Judah did it from the fall feast of Tishri. All of these little details coming together in these past several months, bringing the big picture, tighter and tighter closer and closer and closer all of these things including the revelation of the 70 years okay including this understanding that we have known here in this ministry for probably about three and a half years now we're probably i would say the only ministry on the face of the planet that has the revelation of psalms 90 and 10. you see a lot of people will tell us that Oh, well, it says 70 to 80. Well, that's because we're already three years in. Oh, really? Well, according to spring, you would be three and a half years in. So how do you count for six and a half years left, not seven? You see, so what they'll do is they'll say, oh, well, it's been about three years. So three years, and even if we take the Revelation 12 sign, oh, yeah, that's almost four years. You're only left with six. Now, what do you do about your seven years that you like to talk about? You see, we're the only ministry, brothers and sisters. There's no separation from this 70 to 80 year understanding. It didn't say 70, take away three or four, and then the other six or seven. That's not what it said. It says from 70 to 80. Okay. And now where, where the, this whole ministry has been wrapped in within all of these revelations coming. The biggest of the big picture keys that we'd been trying to understand for so long was where the heck is this 70th year? We know where it is now. We know that we are in it and it began at the fall feast last year. I'm going to show you because of one of the biggest revelations we've had in this ministry. There are two keys. There's the who the gospels are speaking to. And then the 14 years, the revelation that the gospels revealed, there's the above portion of 14 years. Then there's seven for Mark and seven for Matthew. But then we've also talked about another, another revelation that is a huge thing that we talk about all the time. 
but I've in the past I've sometimes said it's kind of like a third key but it's not really a key because the first two are the keys that open it up but it was those two keys of who the gospels are speaking to and the revelation of the 14 years which has a big picture of 21 22 years that revealed the open books that revealed what this ministry is about where the 14 year tribulation understanding and the opened the opening of the books are revealed what is this opening of the books you got it these books that have opened in what we call the chapters to years we're going to cover some of these a bit today in a detail like we never have before and we're going to see it was before us the whole time okay this 70 to 80 years without understanding the true 70th year ability to understand when it takes place all else goes out the window or maybe not out the window but goes on hold we continue to develop and reveal and and be led in understanding and the scriptures opening to us that's what this ministry is all about i didn't leave everything i was doing and quit my company and everything else i was doing because i just mamsy pamsy went about and thought maybe there was something happening no my life changed because i was understanding things that had never been revealed before and you guys see them now too it's not kind of it's not sort of it's not maybe 70 to 80 years is 10 years soon is a short period of time i call it six months and then we fly away. That's Psalms 14, uh, Psalm, uh, uh, Revelation 12, verse 14. Three and a half years. So you got 10, six months, three and a half years. That's 14 years. But it begins at 70. Well, 70, well, I thought that was 20, 2018. They had completed 70 years. That's what we all thought. That's what we all thought, but now we know. And we know that we're in it right now. And that's the reason we have such a focus in what we're doing now. And, and everything like, like laser beam getting tighter and tighter, you know, like, like a magnifying glass. You're, we're bringing it in closer and closer and closer and closer. That's what's happening now. And today's revelation, today's understanding is going to bring greater clarity to the chapters to years. It is going to show us one of the greatest purposes in revealing the last option, the last possible possibility of all possibilities based on the chapters to years. That's what we're going to get into. And so for those of you who are new to this ministry, you want to come click on this playlist and click on it right here. It is, I won't say mandatory, but if you want to understand what's going on, you want to understand what's been revealed and just begin to understand it, you need to come watch these first two videos. These are the two keys. This is an introduction, 30 minutes and 30 minutes. This printout here, you can come into the, into the description box under the video and you can print it out, download it for yourself, print it out, whatever you want. All right. You can also go to the description box under this video that you're watching now and you can go to the website ministryrevealed.com or you can click the link to get the book on Amazon or click the free PDF link. And that PDF link, you can download the Ministry Revealed book for free. 287 pages you can download it and get greater detail of these things here and many other things that are revealed in the rest of these intro videos but it's imperative to understand the revelation of who the gospels are speaking to all our lives we've been taught from matthew we don't understand why mark is written the way it is why luke is written the way it is in the synoptic gospels when you understand this your mind is going to open up in scripture 
like it never has in your entire life. I don't care if you've been a pastor for 50 years. Your life in reading scripture is going to drastically change. You're going to understand that Matthew, Mark, Luke in the end is Luke, Mark, Matthew. <clears throat> and that all of our lives, when you come to this third video, you're going to understand the reason why the whole world believes the tribulation is only seven years. It's because we've all been taught from the book of Matthew. And Matthew, who is to the Jews, is going to go through the seven years of tribulation for trumpets. But we've never understood what Mark is about. It's not just another viewpoint in scripture. It is in, in the context of what happened initially, but there's a reason in the is to come. That revelation is, is Mark. Okay, they're the seven years of seals. And Luke, his discourse is the revelation of 40 days. They're the 40 days of the Son of Man. That's why when Christ went to the cross in Luke's gospel, he was arrayed in a gorgeous white garment. That's why in Mark, when he went, he was given purple. And when you go to Matthew, he's arrayed in scarlet. How on earth are there three different accounts? Didn't they see what he was wearing? You see, that revelation, that one piece of understanding, that's revealed in this, in this intro along with many other things. But when you get the book, you download the book or buy the book, you're going to see way more. And the book doesn't even have all of it. This second video is going to reveal what we were just talking about with the 14 years. You're going to see when you can now not just see from Matthew's perspective, but when you see from the entirety of the Gospels, of the Synoptics and the Gospels, including John, you're going to see the entire perspective. You're going to see that the, the picture of the end of days isn't just one set of seven years, but really it's the first seven fast passing, what we would call easy years, like Jacob. Then seven more years he had to work for Rachel. Then six more years for the cattle before he made a covenant with his father-in-law for a total of 20 years. This is when the Lord will return, feet down on the Mount of Olives, at the end of the sixth trumpet to the beginning of the seventh trumpet. That's why you see the Lord there and it says everything on earth and on uh, in heaven and on earth is his. It's, it's awesome. I promise you, when you understand these things, it's going to blow your mind. And this third video is going to give you the understanding as to how it was missed. Okay, why wasn't it taught in the churches? Was it on purpose? I don't believe it was on purpose. Sometimes I thought it was on purpose. Maybe they saw things, and we know they saw things over the years, but they could never correlate them. And the reason was it wasn't yet time. All right? And in these past four years, these are the things that have been revealed in this ministry and that have opened up so many more things. That's why these two are the keys right here. And when you come down to a video like this one right here, intro to the end time chapters to years this was the third video after these two uh sorry after um after these first two but i moved it down further for the same reason it was moved further down in the book you see in the book it went to chapter seven and it's called the the books have opened why did we put it in chapter seven so that you can understand get the eyes opened and the mind and the spirit opened to see the end time revelation being given throughout the entirety of scripture so that when you got to this point of seeing these chapters to years open in this chapter you would begin to see clearly and understand why john is the revelation of the final 21 years why the first 21 chapters of genesis are like the same 21 of John, revealing similarities in periods of time of when events are going to happen. You see, it's the same thing we did with Zechariah, with Hosea, with all of these books. And in the book, what's, what's funny enough, is in the book with the chapters to years, the main parts we focus on is John and Genesis, which you're going to see today, and Hosea and Zechariah with a little bit of Psalms. But it's John and Genesis. 
Okay, there's a reason why in the beginning and in the beginning. It's been talked about for centuries of this connection between John and Genesis both saying in the beginning. But this ministry was given the revelation through the opening of the Gospels, through the revelation of the 14 years of tribulation, which is the big picture, 21 years. And then the opening of the books. And it's this opening of the books that is going to be the bulk of today's focus. All right? So, <clears throat> so anybody new, I promise you, come and watch these videos and you'll be blessed in understanding more than you ever have before in understanding Scripture. All right? Guys, I want to show you guys something real quick. You guys would have seen a little glimpse right here. You'll notice that's not English. This is German, brothers and sisters. The book has been written in German. We have a sister over in Germany who has written the book in German. Um, obviously, <laughs> I'm not going to read it for you. But uh, if somebody else from Germany, uh, we've got some brothers and sisters in Germany. They can come and read through it and 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 maybe uh, 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 confirm. But I know that our sister reviewed it and confirmed it. I don't know how many uh, she confirmed it with as well to, to re have a reread. But if you guys wanted to, this would be great. But we're going to post it um, as well on ministryrevealed.com, on the website. So we have the book. It'll be available just like this in PDF. So we have the book in English. We have it in Norwegian. And now we have it in German. All right, brothers and sisters. So this is very exciting. And I'm grateful for our sister, Tan. I think it's Tanja or Tanya, but it's spelled German. So... Thank you, sister. I appreciate it. This is going to bless many, many people. Uh, so thank you so very much. Now, I want to share with you guys a couple things here as we get started. If you'll remember the menorah, we've taught on this uh, a little bit relatively recently, and we mentioned it again recently, how the menorah had the three sections, right? And that each branch had one, two, three, 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 and one. So you had seven, 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 and one. And it was all about the almonds, right? That almond bud. Well, we when we came across this, when we understood that that's what it had, it really blew our mind because the menorah was confirming the revelation of the end of days. Because what is the revelation of the end of days? It's seven, 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 one. See, 22. It's the exact same as the menorah, and it was revealed with these almond buds that were on the branches. And when you take those seven, seven, seven from one side of the branch to the other, and it went seven, 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 and one, and then you've got the seven candles on the top of each. If you take the 7 divided by the 22, you end up with the base for pi, 3.14. So it's the revelation that it's in everything. And that was such a beautiful, beautiful confirmation for us, proving yet again that we have understood. And when, you, when we get into these open books today, in particular, this row right here, of which many of it we've gone before, we're going to focus on three of them. It's so awesome. This seven, the only way to understand where these are going to be is you had to understand the true 70th year. There's no way around it. We've understood it. We traced it all the way back to the birth of Christ. And we didn't do it based on where we thought the birth of Christ was. We did it based on the last what? Seven and seven. The final seven and seven and one. See? The 22 or the 15th year. See? The 22 or the 15th year. This is how we did it. And we took it in reverse. And it brought us to Christ's birth. It brought us to the true understanding of his death and resurrection when he began his ministry, when he was baptized. 
the year in between, the death of and resurrection, how old he truly was. It brought us to the revelation of when Israel became a nation and the reason there had to be three years when they first came into the land before the new cycle could begin again. That's why Leviticus chapter 19 said, when you come into the land that I give you for three years, it is uncircumcised, you can't take from it. These were the three years. Then we finally understood, okay, we're in the 70th year, but where? Do we say from May 14th? Is God actually using when they became a nation? Or was there something more to it? And of course, we realized, we came to understand that there was something more to it, right? We came to realize there's the house of Israel counting with what, as we shared in the last video in a, a few videos ago, that the house of Israel counted in non-accession and the house of Judah counted in accession. So the house of Israel was counting from Nisan's feasts and the house of Judah was counting from the fall feasts. Well, when Christ came the first time, he fulfilled what? The spring feasts to Pentecost, did he not? It went from left to right and he fulfilled and right to Pentecost was fulfilled. So many people have said, just like when you read the, the building of the menorah, it's not one branch, it's six branches. They look like they're all connected, of course, but it is six branches. Okay? And if this was the first one, well, I'm going to share something with you today. If this was the first one, do you think it's possible that this is the last one? And what I mean by that is not for the escape, but for the count of the revelation of the 40 days of the Son of Man. I'm going to share this with you. I'm going to reveal this to you today with the open books. But you see this menorah and why I'm bringing it up. We've got the total seven and then seven and then seven and one, which we just went through, which confirmed the end time revelation. <coughs> But do you know there's even more to it that's so awesome? Many people say, well, the, the book of Enoch should have been in the Bible, and this one should have been in the Bible, and this one should have been in the Bible. Don't you think God put exactly what he needed in the Bible to be in the Bible? The King James is, is the perfect Bible. It is the greatest translation we have. It's not to say we can't go to Enoch, and we can't go to Second Esdras, and all these things, and get greater revelation and, and pieces of detail for something else. It just means that the 66 books are complete. Well, I don't know if you guys have ever watched this. This was shared in the, in the ministry, in the forum. So for anybody that's new, you can come to the website right here. Go to ministryrevealed.com, click on the menu, and you everything is there for free. One click download of videos to save, to share with people, to save for your left behind. Uh, the printouts are there for free. Uh, uh, you can join the forum. And in the forum, we have well 800 and some odd people in there that are sharing things from all over the world, from all sorts of nationalities in there sharing and praying over people and lifting up and, and, and news and, and events and, and scripture. Well, this was something that was shared in there as well. And this brother's got some great teachings, okay? And this one that he shares was also really awesome. I had never heard of it before. So beyond the menorah having the seven, 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 and one, within each of the nubs that are the one, two, three, one, two, three, and then one, just like we shared in the picture, okay? One, two, three, one, one, two, three. So the total is seven, but each branch within each section there are nine piece uh, there are three pieces so you've got 369 369 369 369 369 369 and the middle one has a total of 12 portions to it okay 12 12 distinct items within the build of it and that's why you see here 999 nine, nine, 12 on the candlestick the other side of the branch is 999 nine, nine. You want to know what's so awesome? Let me bring let me make this picture bigger for you guys. You want to know what's so awesome? What was fulfilled? Okay? 
this portion right here, the spring feasts, up to what? Pentecost. So Passover, first fruits, feast, uh, uh, um, uh, unleavened bread, first fruits, and Passover or uh, Pentecost, right? Shavuot, the the big count. This has been fulfilled. Well, do you know that the nine nine nine, okay, nine plus nine plus nine equals twenty seven, and the other side nine plus nine plus nine equals twenty seven, and the middle one is twelve. So you end up with 27, 12, and 27. But this side has already been fulfilled. So if you add 27 plus 12, what do you get? Of course, you get 39, right? You get 39. So the total number of elements on this side or parts to it is 39. And the things that are still left unfulfilled on this side on the three branches are the 999 and 27. So the fulfilled portion is 39, and the unfulfilled portion is 27. Check this out. The Old Testament contains how many books? 39. What was already fulfilled? 39, all related to the spring feast and Pentecost. What's left to fulfill during New Testament time? 27. How many books are in the New Testament? 27. Isn't that awesome? Fulfilled 39 total, unfulfilled 27 total for a total of 66 books. Do you know why this is awesome to us? Because we know it's this side here that remains in this revelation of the big picture. This is the this is the revelation, right? We know it's the end, the the fall feast. Everybody knows it's the fall feast. <clears throat> we all know it's the fall feast. But look at that: thirty nine Old Testament books, twenty seven New Testament books. The sixty six books are complete. They were all that we needed. It's awesome, right? I just wanted to share that. I thought that was just beautiful, beautiful picture. But I'm going to share this with you guys now. I'm going to share with you guys here a few minutes, and I don't know if I have this at the right starting spot. Uh, 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 I don't think I do. Here, give me a second. Okay, so we're going to listen to a few minutes of this because this is also very exciting. It's this pastor right here, and he had twin. He has twin daughters, but one of his daughters back in 2012, okay, nine years ago, back in 2012, she had a vision dream of being taken to heaven. And I want you to hear what she saw when she sat at the table of the wedding banquet in heaven and what was placed at her table. It's awesome. It'll give you more excitement to prove again with a vision dream of a little girl back nine years ago that is applicable to where we are today because of how old she is. This was also shared in the forum. Listen to this. Room, under the bed, the doorways, and casting out that foul spirit that my daughter was so terrified of that night. After these prayers I had finished, she laid her head down and she fell asleep within minutes. Then the next day, when we all woke up, my daughter came to me running, saying, Dad, that she had had a dream, that she went to heaven, and that the angels took us up into the clouds at the sound of the trumpet. And this is where the dream comes from below that I will also read. And I felt to ask her, what happened? And I wrote it down to warn the people. Now, I know the details of things that she was describing could not have been made up in her imagination at that age and at that particular time, because the detail that was there, that could have not have been added, but the urgency for us to know that the Lord was coming back soon. So let me start off. Trumpet sounds. My immediate family, according to my daughter, of parents and four sisters, one brother, along with some other brethren, were all gathered in a park near my grandmother's house during the day. And we were all looking up into the sky as though we knew something was going to take place while looking up. When then we saw 10 sets of angels and a hand stick out of the clouds, each with a trumpet, and they were starting to blow the trumpets. And they did this for about seven seconds. After they had finished, the hands withdrew as though they put the trumpets down. And 11 angels came flying down from the clouds to the park that where we were all standing. And once they landed, they picked each one of us up like the way you hold a baby and were escorted by an angel that went before them. They all seemed to be about seven feet tall and wearing beautiful white garments. 
Next part, raptured into the heaven. The angels all followed the escort right up till they came to the gates of heaven that were so beautiful with two posts on either side, with pearls on the top, made of gold, with a door that was made out of beautiful stainless type metal that had circle pearls, diamonds, and jewels built within it. The escort angel opened the gate and led us through heaven where the paths were gold. Then they carried us straight to the wedding feast banquet. The next part, the wedding banquet. I saw our home church members sitting, already waiting at the table. And the table and chairs were gold and beautiful. And Jesus was sitting at the head of the table because he seemed to be about seven to eight feet tall and wore a king's crown and clothes. And once we came through to the seat where we were supposed to sit, the angel dropped us and we were changed already into our beautiful white garments, like something that is so different and made especially by the angels for us. The table was full of food that had already been prepared by the angels angels for us, and the entire cutlery cups were of the best fit for a king. Then we were told to sit down, and once all the people arrived, which were coming at different times, but very close to each other, the angels then went around the room and started placing cards on each of the people, and I seemed to be around 16 years of age. Next part, Jesus shares. Jesus said something to all the people, and the angels asked us to join in, and we all gave thanks for the food that was there as we were about to partake. Then we started the feast, and the people were very happy, enjoying themselves, talking and eating, and Jesus was speaking to most of everyone. Now moving on to the last part, special paper, with age given to each person. Then we had beautiful dessert, and once all finished, the angels went around the room behind each person, and wrote on a special bit of paper the age of the person. And this is how I found out that I was now 16 years of age, as it had been written on the paper, the number 16. All the people's shoes were beautiful. The girls had low high heels, but they were short heels, and the boys also had golden shoes without the heels. He is coming, the king is coming, are you ready for the rapture? Praise the Lord, precious saints. The Bible says, according to 1 Corinthians 15, verse 52, Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be all changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. And 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 15 to 18, For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Precious saints, as you know, this dream was given to my daughter when she was seven years of age. And this year, being one of a twin, they both turned 16 in July of this year. Precious saints, when they... Hello. Did you get that? <clears throat> His daughter was seven years old when she told her dad about that dream. She's a twin, and this July, 2021, they turned 16 years old. The age that she was told she was on that piece of paper when she was there in heaven. And the dad, this guy, Robert, this pastor, was reminded of it after them having turned 16 that nine years earlier, she had the dream that she was 16 when the rapture happened. Get excited, brothers and sisters. Do you see what else this, this says for us? Outside of the encouragement, that something like this nine years ago, you wouldn't think anything at 16 years old, right? As, as a pastor who, who's, the, who's the father, or as us listening, if it had happened to my daughter, I would have just thought, oh, maybe that's just her forever age when she's in heaven. It went to clue into me that when she was 16 years old, well, here we are, brothers and sisters, in the year we know is the 70th year based on the house of Israel's time and that God works in harvests. Everything is harvest related from mid Nisan to the end of Tishri or the mid end of Tishri. We know it goes from Passover to the end of Tabernacles. That is the time of the Lord's quote unquote work period, the, the difference of barley and wheat and grapes and fruit and olives and everything. That is the section of time. So if this was in July, that her birthday when she turned 16, do you see why this is also significant for us? Because it takes away 
the spring feasts. Okay? And knowing that the spring feasts are already fulfilled, and it was the house of Israel, and that he was already the lamb for the house of Israel, the focus is the fall feasts. And so here we are at this point and saying, Lord, when? How much longer can it be? Because there's one thing we've come to understand. Well, way more. I, I say that, you know, to, to emphasize this one thing about the 40 days of the Son of Man. We're the one ministry I know of on earth. You might hear other people. Like, I find it fascinating that there are people out there saying they think the Son of Man is here. Uh, why would you think that? Nobody knows the Son of Man is coming first. They, are, were they watching this ministry? And then they're, 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 they're in a way talking about it? Or why would they be talking about 40 days coming? What would 40 days have to do with anything before the rapture? You see, and yet people are still talking about it. We have the revelation here in this ministry, brothers and sisters. We've been given it. We know it. It's understood. And we're going to chat a little bit. It's, it's going to be tied into this today. <clears throat> and the reason we look at these things and we're so committed to understanding these things is like I said in the beginning. We know it's the 70th year. The, the key here has been where exactly is the Lord God counting this from? Is he counting it just from tab from the Feast of Trumpets just because that's where that's where the Jews have the, the calendar? Is he counting it from Yom Kippur? Is he counting it from the beginning of tabernacles? Or is he counting it from the end of tabernacles? Somewhere in here is the answer. Well, now we got a, we got we got a, some serious questions going on here. Because the question then is, well, if it ends here and this is the beginning of the tribulation of the 14 years, well, there's there's not enough days left to equal 40 days. Well, what about Tishri? Well, if it had to be 40 days ending here at Tishri, there's not enough days left to equal Tishri. Well, guess what? In the previous video, what were we looking at? We were looking at this period right here, saying this would be the wedding week, right? But what if it's not the wedding week? What if this is still where the gathering, the 40 days of the Son of Man are? What if the 40 days of the Son of Man go to the last day of, cha of tabernacles? And then if it does go to the last day of tabernacles, well, sorry, I should say, if it doesn't go to the last day of tabernacles, then what's left? There's nothing left. There would be nothing left till the, till the spring feasts again in 2022. That is literally impossible according to the 70 years. Do you understand that if the spring comes again next year and nothing has changed, that Israel will have officially completed now 71 years, according to the house of Israel using Nisan in the spring feasts. It's not possible. This has proven it. This entire count, all the way back to the birth of Christ, to the end of the end of days, and the beginning of the millennium. This has proven it. It's not me that's proven it. It's, it's the Sabbath. It's, it's literally, do you know how to count and add? Seven years, seven years, seven years, seven years, seven years, seven years, seven years. This has proven it. So knowing that we're in the, from 2020 fall to 2021 fall, fall feast to fall feast, and then begins the beginning of tribulation. Well, 
this is what we're getting at. If it does, if the 40 days didn't equal to here and they haven't equal to here and they didn't equal to here, there's only one final period. This is the end of the end of all 70 right here. But now, can we justify this? <clears throat> it's not just about saying, oh, this is where I'm going next. This isn't what we do in this ministry. It is the revelation and the teaching of the revelation and the building upon the revelation and more revelation coming that continues to bring that magnifying glass closer and closer and closer and closer. Do you see, we've talked many times in the ministry about the purpose of the opened books. We've explained many times in the revelation of the open books that there's a mystery within them that you can only discern by understanding the events that would take place throughout these periods of time. So when you read one of the chapters, for example, you don't know, and I've, I've mentioned this many, many times, you don't know if the event being mentioned is the early part of the year, is the middle part of the year, is the end part of the year or in some cases the chapter is really depicting events throughout the entirety of the year okay it could be one of four of those things discernment has to be used in the understanding of the revelation of the end of days to know which one it is well when we get to john 7 we'd understood or i should say we believed i i believed that i understood that last year, when that period of time came, what I thought it was, was giving us the beginning of the count. Okay, meaning that was the, the start period. Well, of course, it had to be assumed it was something like that because the time came and went. But guess what? That was because we didn't yet have the clarity of the true 70th year. We've been seeking the proper understanding of the 70th year since the ministry began because it was the revelation of Psalms 90 and 10. We knew 70 to 80. We understood the entirety of that, of that verse. So the only way it was true is if, bang, this is the 70th year. And then it came and went and nothing changed. Well, something was amiss. And of course, we know now it's Leviticus 19. We understood that three years had to be added at the beginning. Well, when you add three years, like we showed in the chart, you add those three years where they were uncircumcised, the trees they couldn't take from them, and then now they could, and we're in the time of Judah, not in the time of Israel, because this time is about the fall feast, not the spring feast. Hello, menorah. What had to happen? Three years. So from the fall of 51, from the fall feasts of 51 to the fall feasts of 21 is the three years plus 70 years. And Psalms 91 doesn't say, uh, Psalms 90 verse 10 doesn't say from 71 to 80. It says from 70 meaning from the moment that 70 is hit day one day one that follows after 70 years is fulfilled will be the beginning of the count of the 10 plus short time plus three and a half years there's no way around it you can't you can't maybe you can't possibly it that's exactly what it is. And if it didn't equal this, and it didn't equal this, and it didn't equal this, can we prove that it's the end of tabernacles? I'm telling you we can. And it was before us the whole time. But again, it has to be in its correct time. 
right? This is why, this is why as we're going from event to an to event and trying to trying to figure out which one it's connected to, we're we're always seeing this one. But it's because we 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 haven't understood this other piece, but it, the other piece was still there. We just hadn't yet come back to see it. But you know what happened in the last video? We did come back to see it. I shared it briefly in the last video when I was making the point about tabernacles. But we were looking at the beginning of tabernacles, not the end. I'm going to show you what the revelation is. And it's not one piece, it's the whole story. We know it has to equal the 40, the 40 days of the Son of Man must equal the end of the 70 years. No later than the end of the 70th year. No later. There's no, there's no maybes about it. We know the reason why Psalms, uh, uh, why 2 Corinthians chapter 12 said above 14 years. That means the bride doesn't go right at the end of the 70th. The bride goes above before the 14 years begins. And the mystery had always been how much further above the 14 years. Well, then we had that revelation. This is the end time code. We know the end time code is 50 days, 14 years, 50th Jubilee. You, you guys all know the story. You guys all know the revelation from our sister Jodell that nobody on earth knew that I had prayed in the shower at about 11.30, 11.45 at night. Everybody in the house was asleep. I said it in my thoughts to the Lord. And boom, I go downstairs at 1 o'clock in the morning and I see a message she's given me from the Holy Spirit to say that I was right on target, that I had understood that it was 50, 14, 50. That it was noon. Noon, 14th letter equaled 50. Okay, we understood it. So what had recently come about is that if this was the beginning of the 14 years, and even if this was going to be the wedding, but if the beginning of tabernacles was going to be the beginning of 14 years and the end of the 40 days, if we went back 50 days, it would bring us to like, the second, I believe it was, of August, the 24th of Av. Well, what does that equal? What does that have to do with anything? What is the 24th of Av about anything? It seems like a very random date in, in biblical understanding, in, in Hebrew uh in hebrew count in in anything it seems like a very odd count to have a random date like that be the beginning of the 50 day count which is the revelation we got from the holy spirit that it'll be 50 days then the 14 years will begin and then the 50th jubilee well the 14 years and then the 50th and final jubilee that's that's the easy part this is, this is not a mystery. This is what we've known for years. This is what we've been developing and revealing for years. It's the mystery, and the greatest part of the mystery, was the first 50 days. Once we understood we were in the true 70th year. Once we understood that there was a difference between the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Once we understood that the Lord works within feasts. Within, within harvests, I should say. You see? So what ended up happening is I said, hold on a second. We have these chapters to years. We've been talking about these chapters to years for years, for three years. And if we're in the 70th year, and it is the 70th, and it's the 7th, which it all is because it's equaled all the way back from Christ, from his birth, then there's got to be understanding. There's got to be revelation 
that can give us the answer within these chapters because they will all give us some sort of clue of events that will take place at some point within this seventh year. But do you want to know something that's even better? Why would it give us something within this seventh year at the time, which will be the year of the escape of the bride, the above 14 years, why would any of these chapters that are the clues for us tell us anything six months before, eight months before, at the beginning of the seventh year? If they were connected to reveal to us things that were pertaining to us at the time of the pre-trib, wouldn't the revelation of the open books be to tell us, give us greater understanding, greater information of that period of time? Of course it would. Of course it would. And so my understanding of John having read into it last year and thinking, well, maybe it's, it's the start of the count. No, it's not. Because what we're going to understand, just like we shared in the book, one of the key things I talk about is the gospel of John compared to the gospel, uh, compared to the book of Genesis. The book of John to the book of Genesis is key. You see, we've had the book of John for a long time with its 21 chapters and being revealed to us. And we spoke about it in the last video a bit. We even spoke about Genesis in the video, last video a little bit. You see, Genesis was only revealed about two, a little over two years ago. Okay. And that came about because of a sister I was talking with in, in I'm in Alberta in Canada and Calgary. And she's over in British Columbia. And she wanted to share things with me that she thought were connected to now in Genesis. But what she was talking about were things that were mid. And when I was reading them, I, I had an epiphany as I was talking to her. And I said, wait a second. That's not talking about now. That's talking to the end of seals. And I started to freak out. And I went back and I said, oh, my goodness. This is why they got into the ark in chapter 7 and the 40 days began. And that's why in chapter 8, it's the end of 40 days and the 14 years beginning. And I said, oh my goodness. And I freaked out and I started going through Genesis and the 21 chapters. And I said, oh my Lord. It's John being given to us in another form from Genesis. And it was a revelation why John 1 and Genesis 1 both tell us in the beginning and in the beginning. You see, because in the beginning and in the beginning, brothers and sisters, is the revelation we spoke about a few videos back about the entirety of creation. Okay? That the mystery from Genesis 1 verse 1 to verse 2 has been, has been debated as being another creation that was built first. And we've explained that these seven years are like the first 7,000 years that Christ was so excited because the word in the beginning, the word beginning means Christ. So in Christ, God created. And just like Jacob, who was so excited that he said the first seven years flew by like days, like the first 7,000 years when Christ was given everything to create, they flew by like years. Isn't it awesome? That was an awesome revelation because it's something that's been debated for hundreds of years, for centuries and centuries. That there's this other creation between verse 1 and 2. I believe we've proven it. And we can prove it again by in the beginning and in the beginning. Because the first seven chapters to the first seven chapters. In what they reveal to us in the end of days. Because the revelation of the end is revealing the beginning. And the beginning is revealing the end. You see? And then you've got what? 
Well, then we had the second 7,000 years, which was the creation of Genesis 1. You get to Genesis 2, and it ends with the seventh year of rest, or the seventh day of rest. And we know that a thousand years to the Lord is as a day, and a day is as a thousand years. So if we were as humans looking from a distance and we saw the creation, it would have felt like 7,000 years total to us, but to the Lord, it was only a thousand, it was only seven days. And then what do we see in chapter two? Then you see Adam being formed of the earth and you've got the beginning of man. And that began what? Not from his creation, but from his fall. Began what? The final 6,000 or the final six years. And what? Then the 7,000th year, the seventh year. Hello? It's the whole story. The end has revealed the understanding, these mysteries in the beginning. And the beginning has helped reveal and confirm the end. And that's what's going on here with Genesis and John. It's exactly what's going on. And so what happens when we get to John? We're going to go, we're going to spend some time in this. But we're going to go, we're going to skip over it, but we're going to come back. Okay, we're going to touch on it, but then we're going to come back. You see, what was this all about? Well, it's the Feast of Tabernacles. It's the Jews' Feast of Tabernacles. Let that soak in for a moment. It's the Jews' Feast of Tabernacles. And at the last great day, now people will, will debate that this last great day is the eighth day of Tabernacles. I am not so certain about that. And the reason I say that is because it says it's the last great day of the feast. Okay? When you go and do a search and do a study on the last great day, they'll call it the eighth day. But when you go and study it, you find out that this final day of the year, this last great day, they say is, is a separate thing right here. Uh, the abundance, da, 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 where is it? Well, you can go and search it and you'll see that it talks about it uh, as being separate. That this last great day is separate from the Feast of Tabernacles. Okay? That this last great day is also a type and shadow of, yes, the eighth day, which is when the millennial reign is done and it's eternity. Yes, it's that. But there is an end of time, an end of days portion that is still going to play before the eternity portion. And so I believe that this last great day that we read about in John 7 isn't so much the eighth day as it is the seventh day of tabernacles. Okay? Because listen to what also is followed next. Listen to this. But this spake he, saying that he is living water, and all come to him, right? On the last great day of the feast, he stood and cried, right? But he spake, uh, but this spake he of the spirit, which they that believed on him should receive, for the Holy Ghost was not yet given. Brothers and sisters, what book are we in what book is this john chapter 7 and in the chapters to years it's the seventh year and it's christ here speaking to them till the end of tabernacles and then what do we know is going to happen at the end of the 40 days of the Son of Man as happened in history when he was here the first time. What happens? The Holy Ghost is sent out, isn't he? You see that? You ever wonder why this was here? given in brackets when he's talking like this and all of a sudden we get this place in brackets talking about but he's speaking in the spirit of the holy ghost that's going to be sent out 
on those that are supposed to receive him, those that believe on him that will receive him. Like, okay, that's kind of understood though, isn't it? So why is this here? I believe for exactly the revelation of the end. Because we know when the 40 days of the Son of Man are over, what happens? Let's go have a look. Remember Genesis 7, right? We've shared about Genesis 7 and its connection. This is what we're talking about, right? The connection between John and the connection between Genesis. The revelation of the 21 chapters. We covered much of it, or, or in, in part, we covered parts of it, important parts, in the last video. And showed this, this dying again that's going to take place. But now we're on the other spectrum. We're, we're coming back to this whole beginning of things. Okay? And what do we know? Well, we know that Jesus told us in Luke 17 that the Son of Man's days, in the time he's going to be rejected, is going to be the days as it was in the time of Noah when he got into the ark. Well, we know that when they all got into the ark, and the Lord shut them in, the 40 days began. Okay? The 40 days began, and they began where? In chapter 7? So where are we right now? In chapter 7 of Genesis. And where are we right now in John? We're looking in chapter 7 of John. Genesis is telling us everybody got in the ark, and the door was shut. The Lord God locked the doors, protected them in there safely. And, Jen and, and John is telling us to the end of tabernacles. Do you understand? Are, are you catching what's happening here? If every one of these chapters is, is the revelation of, of the chapters to years to give us insight at the end of seven years to the time of the escape, wouldn't it make sense, as I said a little while ago, that every single one of these chapters to years that are giving us insight would reveal something to do with 50 days or 40 days into when the 40 would end to when the bride would go, uh, how long the Son of Man is here, what is he doing, what happens at the end of it. It wouldn't be talking about things several months before the end because the revelation of this is the end of days. Which means Luke's discourse, then Mark's, then Matthew's. And Luke's discourse is only a period of 40 days. But we know from the Holy Spirit that it's 50, 14, 50, but that the crux of it will begin at the 40 days. Do you know that every single one of these chapters is speaking about a period from the time of the start of the 40 days until the end of the 40 days, every single one of these six chapters, every single one. I just showed you in Genesis chapter seven, what happens? The Lord locks them in. The bride is gone, taken into safety. And what happens? The 40 days of the son of man begin. Do you know what happens when you get to chapter eight? Even if we go to chapter 8 of John, what do we see? Well, what's the chapter 8 of John? The seven years are now complete. They are complete, which means it's the beginning of the 14 years or the beginning of the eighth year. The first year is the same as saying the eighth in the big picture. So it's at the beginning of the eighth year. And just like Jacob, he had to fulfill. Seven years, they had to be completed before he can go be with his wife. You see, we spoke about that even in the last video, but we were relating it to here. But what I'm sharing with you and what you should be able to see now is there's a reason 
why the Gospel of John, which is representative of the seventh year, still not in chapter 8, it's in chapter 7, which means it's got to relate to a period of time within the seventh year. And if it's not the beginning, which we can prove through each and every single one of these chapters, is that it's not the beginning, but that it's 40 days until the end of the year. What do you think John chapter 7 is telling us? I'll tell you what he's telling us. John chapter 7 is the Feast of Tabernacles, and Christ is here until the end of it. And when the Feast of Tabernacles is over, the Holy Ghost is released to those disciples who had been following him, who had believed on him, that they should receive it. Just like we've been teaching in the Revelation. Acts chapter 2. You see? What happens at that time when the Holy Spirit comes, gives them that anointing? Do you know that that's the following day? That's that, that same last day, following day? The about in eight days? That they'll receive the Holy Ghost because that is the beginning of the 14 years. Do you follow? That's the 14 years starting. It is the last possibility right here. And it's not that we're guessing. It's not that we're thinking maybe. It's in John chapter 7. So it's not telling us that what was the beginning of the year. He's telling us the end of the year. And that's why... In John chapter 7, look at what it ends with. Remember when we shared this uh, about a year or so ago? We thought it was everybody going to their own home because of uh, COVID, right? It was a great connection, but it wasn't the connection. So when the, when the 40 days of the Son of Man are done, at the end of the Feast of Trumpets, and he leaves, look what happens. And every man went to his own home. So in, in Genesis chapter 7, we have when they get into the ark and in the self-same day, the 40 days of the Son of Man begin. And Jacob, when he got the bride he didn't want, the one it said that he hated, he had completed the 70 years before he could marry her. This is what we were talking about in the previous video. The only thing that's happened is instead of the beginning of tabernacles, it's the end of tabernacles that will be the end of the, of the first seven years. And the following day will be the beginning of the 14 years. You see, it's the same thing. This is what they were saying here. You see, the great eighth day is the time of God's holy plan for that final end of the year. You see, the last great day is the final holy day of the year so they would put it at this year september 28th all right i believe it's the last great day of the feast and then this is that time of the holy ghost okay this is the beginning of the 14 years see making this the last day and this is the beginning of the 14 years now how could we say that well, it just said that this last great day, the eighth day, is the beginning of eternity. So this can't be the last day of the feast, like it said in John chapter 7. This is the last great day that eternity will begin in. Well, guess what? If this is the day that eternity begins, then this would be the last day, right? This would be the last day of the year. So we've got another last day of the year. It's the last day. It is the end of the harvest. Do you know right here, remember when we say fall back, right? Do you guys remember that? At the, It's called the harvest moon, by the way, this year, which is appropriate as well, isn't it? Going from the 20th to the 21st, 22nd. And, and what happens at the, uh, at the um, 
at the what the fall equinox, the autumn equinox. Well, in our neck of the woods, you have to bring the clocks back one hour. Okay, we still do it, and the reason we did it and the reason where it comes from is so that those in the harvest have more time to work with more sunlight from the moon. I mean, with more uh, shining light from the full moon. You see, so there's still harvesting going on at that time. And that's taking place right here. This is still the 40 days. This is why John has Jesus here until the end of tabernacles and then why it says everybody went to their own home. Look what happens when, like we were saying a moment ago, when, when uh, Jacob completed his seven years, then he was able to marry her, which means the wedding will not take place till the beginning of the eighth year. You see? That one week wedding will not happen until the completed seven years is over and according to john's chapters to years this feast of booths tabernacles is the final seven days that he's here which means when the seven years are over his gentile bride will come to stand before him as this woman caught in adultery and he's bent on one knee, standing before the woman. She's the only one left standing. We know this, right? It's the type and shadow of the Gentile bride. It now explains, guys. Do you understand what this all does? It explains why Hosea chapter 1 has the Lord say to Hosea, who is Jesus, the deliverer, go get your wife of whoredoms and the children of whoredoms. It's not because they're still on the earth. They're already kept in a safe place. It's like the it's like the the story that we that we teach about what happens at the end when the 14 years are over and the father blows the trumpet. And when he blows the trumpet, he now the son and all of his bridegrooms uh, they uh, and all of his his groomsmen, they all go out together. And they start sounding the shofar and they go to get the bride. But not because she was somewhere remote, right? Somewhere all scattered. No, no, she was already in a place prepared. You following? So it makes sense that it's at the very beginning of Hosea. Because as we know, for those who have been following, we know Hosea, as we said in the last video, see, Hosea is O.C. Hosea, when Jesus says, look, not only to the Jews, but to the Gentiles. As it said in Osi, in Hosea, I called them my people, which were not my people. Sorry, I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her, my beloved, which was not beloved. Okay? And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, you are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. So what do you have? Her beloved and their children. Beloved and children. And Hosea, what did Hosea say? Go get your wife of whoredom and children of whoredom. What, what did John chapter 8 say at the completion of seven years? There's that woman standing before him in adultery. As if on his knees now standing before her as a proposal. Right? When he was bent over and looks up and nobody but this woman is standing before him. We needed to find where the real end of the year was, brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters. And let's not forget, as I was talking about this 50 days. You see, this was still something in the back of my mind, even in doing the last video, that was still a bit troublesome to me, to me personally, because I have had one supernatural knowing like that, which was when the Holy Spirit himself confirmed 
exactly the two things that I had asked just a couple hours prior, less than two hours prior, and nobody on earth knew it. So I knew there has to be something. There has to be a connection to the 50 days. Well, guess what? I didn't know this till yesterday, just the day before yesterday. What was August 9th? Elul, right? August 9th was Elul 1, brothers and sisters. See? Elul 1, the time of repentance. The beginning of repentance. The start of the count. But it wasn't the 40-day count, was it? No, it wasn't. But you know what it was? From Elul 1 until the end of Tabernacles. Bam. I had no idea. 50 days right there. 50 days is before your eyes, brothers and sisters. Elul was significant. Elul is significant. It's the time to get our houses in order. We are right here. It might even be, we, maybe, maybe we go a couple days even earlier. But here is the beginning of 40 days. And I just shared with you, it's the end of the line. It's the actual end of the line. There is no more after this. You want to see something else? I was sharing this with my wife. Watch this. When we go from Genesis, okay? We go from John, we go to Genesis. When we go into from John 8, there he is now, his wife, right? John 8, she, he's now standing before her, which means what? which means the 40 days of the Son of Man have ended, and we know that there are 14 years beginning. So if we go to Genesis, we saw in chapter 7 that it was the bride being shut in, and the 40 days began. Check this out. It seems so simple, okay? It seems so simple. But do you know what John uh, what Genesis chapter 8 verse 6 says? It doesn't say during the 40 days. It doesn't say the 40 days as they continued. It doesn't say as they came to an end. No. It says at the end of 40 days. At the end of 40 days. The raven and the dove go out, and what happens? As we all know, it's the beginning of the seven and seven days as years, seven of seals, seven of trumpets, and it begins what? The tribulation. Do you think it's a mystery that it's the end of 40 days? The end of 40 days, and the dove and the raven go out, and the 14 years then begin? Do you think it's a mystery that it's in Genesis chapter 8 after all of this revelation of the open books? Do we even need to bother going into Ezekiel 33? Everybody goes to Ezekiel 33. Everybody knows it says what? The Son of Man, who Ezekiel is representing, in the end is the representation of the Son of Man warning the people for the 40 days. How about Psalms? Again, we're not going to go into it. We've covered Psalms many times. But Psalms 18, we shared in the last video how Psalms 119 to 133 are called the Psalms of Ascent. And we were teaching these things before we had the revelation of the Psalms of Ascent. And we've been saying that Psalms 18 and 118, but the devastation you can understand is from 18, is going to happen during those 40 days from between the escape of the Bride of Christ 
to the end of the 40 days of the son of man somewhere in that period of time quite probably at the escape of the bride because the energy and the power that's going to leave will cause much of those devastations as the lord coming to get his bride as well just like you read in psalms 18. but what else do we have oh exodus 34. exodus 34 we have the conversation don't we exodus 34 you can't observe the first fruits of the weed harvest which is the bride of christ until the feast of ingathering and then what do we read then you read so there she is already taken but you can't observe her until the feast of ingathering at the year's end well we just showed what this at the year's end significance is we were looking at it maybe it was here maybe the year end was here maybe the year end was here but there's another year end right here and we know it because the great eighth day is the end and in the end of all ends when the millennial is over and eternity begins it will be on the last great day right here proving that this is the end of the year man you see so this is why this is why i was saying these open books and these chapters in particular that reveal in the seventh year that we're in in the 70th aren't just talking about random times far out in the early part of the year no they're going to be specific to luke's time before mark 7 and matthew 7. so we've got the last day of the year which means the end of the 40 days of the son of man we've got the son of man proclaiming warning for 40 days we've got devastation that's going to take place during that time we've got the bride the getting into the ark being taken into the third heaven and the 40 days beginning we've got the bride already being taken and saying that you can't observe her until the year's end and then you have the 40 days the final third time that moses goes up for 40 days as a picture of the son of man well guess what there's another one this is one we haven't talked about in a long time this is another one of those chapters that was revealed after seeing that exodus went in reverse for the longest time i knew there had to be something with judges because john is the only new testament book that has 21 chapters judges is the only old testament book with 21 chapters and we know the big picture is the 21 years so there i believed that there had to be something there but i was always looking from chapter one down as you would normally do but it wasn't until exodus was revealed to us in reverse then I said, wait a second, what if I look at judges in reverse? We haven't spoken about this for a while, so there's a lot of new people that hadn't seen this. Remember, remember, it should line up with all of the conversations taking place, all right? If this is to be true, it should line up with this same conversation of about a 40-day period remaining the a bride being before the lord remember jacob when he got leah he was so ticked off he leah is called the one that he hated and he wanted rachel and he was so upset with his father-in-law and his father-in-law said look the seven years were over right right at the end of the seven years hey just observe her week and i'll give you the fair one that you really want the beautiful one that you really want my daughter rachel but you're still going to work seven more years for her okay you're still going to work seven more years for her but you fulfilled leah seven you got leah oh yeah maybe i duped you but because we couldn't do it that way in our land 
So you got the one that you hated and didn't want, but I'll give you the fairer one and you're going to work seven more years. Let's go have a look at what Judges chapter 15 tells us. Because chapter 15 is what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seventh year. Are you ready? But it came to pass within a while, after the time of the wheat harvest, hello, that Samson visited his wife and kid, and he said, I will go into my wife into the chamber. Hello. Isn't that exactly what happened after the seven years that Jacob worked? I'm going to go into the chamber to be with my wife. And then what happens in Psalms 19, right? What happens when the 40 days is over and the seven days of the, of the, he goes into her at the beginning, at day one, after those seven years? Well, we get to Psalms 19 and we see the Lord as the son, as the bridegroom coming out ready to run a race because he's just been with her. And it's the start of the 14 years. But look at this. So he says that he could be with her. He's going to go take her into the chamber. But her father would not suffer him to go in. Her father wouldn't allow it. Check this out. Here's why. And her father said, I verily thought that thou hadst utterly hated her. Sound familiar? Sound like the story of Jacob repeating itself, but with a different twist? Whoa, I thought you hated this daughter of mine. Therefore, I gave her to your companion. Is not the younger sister fairer than she? Take her, I pray thee, instead of her. This is the story of Jacob with Leah and Rachel again with another twist. And where is it found? Oh, it just so happens. It's right smack dab where it should be, representing the conversation it should be within the final 40 days to the end. In this case, it's the end, the very end of the 40 days, the very end of the seven years being fulfilled, right after he completes tabernacles, is the representation of the seven years being done when Jacob goes to be with Leah, ends up with Le uh, with Rachel, wanted Rachel, ended up with Leah, and then in 19, he comes out ready to run a race because he what? He just went into the chamber to lay with her. Man, you see, guys, this is the importance of the revelation of the open books in the chapters to years. It's interesting, right? Now, we know that these are all types and shadows that we're working in. So which is it? Are we going to be given to Christ or is there a companion maybe, right? Who is the companion? Somebody who is a close dear friend. Look at this. Somebody who tends his flock as well, pastor. Somebody who's a very dear friend and companion to Samson, who is a, who is a type of Christ in this picture, right? Wouldn't that be interesting? Who would be the companion? Maybe it's John. Maybe it's Paul. Right? Maybe it's the Holy Ghost. Maybe it's the Holy Spirit. I've, I haven't talked about this in a while, but you guys remember the video I did a long time ago. And there's an image with the shadow of a man and his, his hands up, his arms up. And there's the, the, the Holy Spirit dove is on the image of his chest. That video is the revelation of these first seven easy years, we call them, or the years that flew by because he was so in love. Who do you think's working these years? The Holy Ghost. This is the Holy Ghost working very hard to prepare and bring about an unblemished bride to Christ. Well, what is the seven years of Mark. Well, the seven years of Mark 
is what Christ is releasing and allowing upon the earth so that he can have what? His lost sheep. Remember the house of Israel. He's already been sacrificed. He's already done the thing for the house of Israel. And we know the Gentiles are grafted in with them. Okay, so that's this is who he came to work for. So when the seals are over, he's got the lost sheep, the, the ten tribes. It, it's over now. The, the time of the Gentiles, the time of the house of Israel. And he doesn't have to be sacrificed. He was already the sacrifice for it as the, as the lamb. That's why the 70 years are important. That's why it's the whole world. Because those 10 tribes mingled with all the Gentiles around the world. But we also shared how the house of Judah, who remains, hasn't had a sacrifice yet. Remember? We went into that with the last part of John. And if they haven't had a sacrifice yet, but they also went whoring. And if this was the Holy Spirit working to bring in the Gentile bride, and this is the time of Christ to bring in his one that he wanted, his, his, ten, his ten tribes of which the Gentiles were mixed in, then who do you think is bringing in Judah? God the Father. See, the Holy Spirit's the sons and the fathers. So I wonder if this companion may actually be the Holy Ghost. You know what happens when we get to the end of the book of Revelation, right? 22 verse 17, if I remember correctly. And the spirit and the bride say, come. Why is it the spirit with the bride? Why isn't it the father with the bride? Why isn't it the son with the bride? Why is it the spirit and the bride say come? Okay, I believe that that's part of the revelation. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying that Judges 15 is literally saying that, yes, we're going to be given to somebody else. Okay, but this is the type and shadow of the Leah Rachel story after having completed in the end time picture in reverse seven years it is the exact same story repeated chapter after chapter book after book do you understand why john is so powerful out of all of the open books in particular in the new testament you see it's only john and acts being split into two John is the most important one. You see? And I would say Genesis is, but we spend a lot of time in Zechariah because it gives a lot of incredible detail as to the time that comes after the seals are done and the seven years of trumpets. When it starts, the Lord there on Mount Zion, they're going to start rebuilding and everything else. And then the Lord being cut off and then returning at the beginning of 14 years, feet down on the Mount of Olives. I mean, it's fantastic. But John and Genesis are the big picture story. And every single one has confirmed it. This is why it's in the seventh chapter out of the nine chapters of the book. Do you, guys, do you understand that your understanding of this is, is, is one of the greatest mysteries that has ever been revealed? This is the Lord revealing to us through the power of his Holy Spirit dwelling within us, giving us the revelation of the is to come so that it could be real revealed before it begins so that when the end comes, when the end of it all comes at the judgment, they can never say, it was never given. Do you know how important this is, guys? My goal and my dream, I should say, was to go and teach this everywhere I can in the world. But I don't believe it was God's purpose and God's will. Otherwise, I would have been traveling. and You guys would have been traveling. We would have been going all over the world telling it. I was just telling my wife the other day. Actually, yesterday we were talking about it. 
had this been given decades ago and there were decades before the tribulation began don't you think if this revelation of pre mid and post being all true that it's the pre-trib escape of the bride 40 days before the tribulation and then in the seventh year of seals it's the rapture and then at the seventh year of trumpets is the return of the lord feet down on the mount of olives if being able to prove that pre mid and post were all true don't you think a whole bunch more people would have been teaching the pre stuff a lot more being able to see that hey i don't want to be part of mid i don't want to be waiting to be part of post i want to be pre why would everybody keep teaching from the gospel of matthew you would start turning to the gospel of luke yes you use all three in teaching lessons but you want to be specific to the end of days and being ready well you got to teach from luke how many people would have been ready who would have said uh i'll just wait for the mid-trib rapture no you see i'm starting to realize and i've started to realize that the purpose of this was not to go and and reach millions and millions of people but that the lord had to reveal it before it began so that in the end there was nobody that could stand up at the time of judgment and say lord how can it have been this way when you never revealed any of it forever it was understood to only be seven and it ended up being this double portion of time of seven and seven how could that be we were never shown he'll say yes it was you didn't hear it you didn't understand it maybe but it was given because i would do nothing unless i first reveal it you see guys it's not that the whole world as i would have hoped <laughs> everybody would have understood it it was that it had to be You see how exciting this makes it, guys? This is why our focus has been, and, and I don't like it really. I'm, I'm, I'm not wanting to say, here's a day, here's a day, here's a day, here's a day. I don't like it. I love teaching the revelation. The revelation of all that has been given and that continues to build with on it within itself. That's what I love to do. And that's what today was. It's never just a date and saying, well, look at this one verse and look at this one verse and doing it every year, every year. No, it's built upon the revelation that keeps building upon itself in the revelation of the 14, 21 years of the open books of the Gospels. Which means there was a reason for John's chapter seven to be to the end of tabernacles that's what it was about guys i don't think i think in the last video i don't even need to go back into you know uh we shared in the last video i believe i shared some of it in the last video maybe the video before you know you go to john chapter 14 and as we saw that's when he says, I go and prepare a place for you when I return. Well, that's it. When he's going to return, he's repairing, returning with the place prepared, paradise. That's the time of the rapture. We go to Genesis chapter 14. It's the first time you see Melchizedek because that's when Christ returns as the high priest. Okay. You go to John chapter 20. It's the image of the type and shadow of Christ returning, having died again, right? Having risen from the dead again. And it's what? At the end of 20 years what happened at the end of 20 years in jacob's story he makes a covenant with his father-in-law in that final year what happens in the story of of, uh, of daniel chapter 9 verse 27 he confirms a covenant in that fi for that final year it's not the enemy it's christ it's the story of 14 years same thing you go to genesis the end of genesis chapter 20 or the beginning so the end of 20 
is you could also say is the beginning of 21. So you can say it's this line between the two. And Genesis chapter 21 starts with, boom, Ishmael, uh, Isaac is born. And how old was Abraham now when Isaac was born? He was 100 years old. How old was he at the time Ishmael was born when the raven goes out? He was 86 years old. Hello. How many years? Raven goes out in chapter 14, uh, in chapter 8, brothers and sisters. Raven is the type and shadow of Ishmael. Raven goes out in chapter 8, and it's the beginning of 14 years. Abraham would have been 86. And 13 years later, to the end of chapter 20, Ishmael is 13. And then in the 14th year, Abraham is 100. And in fact, in the 13th year, you read about in chapter, I believe, 17, you read that in the 13th year of Ishmael, when Abraham's 99, God makes a covenant with him. Well, when would 13 years be? The end of 20, he makes a covenant with him. When was it in John? Jesus returns feet down on the Mount of Olives. What is it with Jacob? Covenant made at the end of the 20 years. And then boom, Abraham's 100 years old and Isaac is born, the promise. This is the revelation of the chapters to years, brothers and sisters. It's all true. And to understand it all being true, guess what? It is the 40 days of the Son of Man. This is the ministry that has the revelation of the 40 days of the Son of Man. So anybody that's new and wants to understand it, it's in the book as well, but it's right here in this intro video. The 40 days of the Son of Man. Why did the churches never understand it? Because they never understood who the Gospels were speaking to. It wasn't yet time. But that has been our ministry. This is what has been given to me to reveal and for all you guys to take part in and share and grow in it together. And it just so happens that the enemy told his people that there would be an enemy coming for 40 days. Don't you find that suspicious? Isn't that intriguing? The fact that the enemy told his own people, don't be deceived by the one coming for 40 days because he is the enemy. That's like the icing on the cake. That, that's like the cherry on top. The fact that the enemy tells his people, hey, I'm warning you guys ahead of time so you don't get fooled by this guy who's going to be here for 40 days. It's awesome. And we know the 40 days is before. Look at this in, in Judges 15. If you read down further, it talks about they, they come to Samson and they want to take Samson now. Okay, it's talking about with the Philistines and the fighting and so forth. Um, he ends up burning all the standing corn, right? With the foxes, he ties the fire brands and burns all the fields and everything else. Well, then what happens? Because he had taken his wife and given her to his companion and he's all upset. We find out that they want to come and take him. And they want to bind him, but he's, he's like, well, wait a second. If you're going to bring me to these guys, you know, I don't want you guys to be the ones to turn on me and to beat me on the way there. He says, if you guys promise me that, then, okay, you can bind me and take me to them. Okay? So they bind him, and they don't beat him, but they take him to the Philistines. Okay? And they went up and pitched in Judah and spread themselves in Lehi. And the men of Judah said, why are you come against us? And they answered, To bind Samson are we come up, to do to him as he hath done to us. And look at what we say. Then 3,000 men of Judah went up to the top of the rock, and this is when they go to get Samson. That's kind of interesting, isn't it? You have now 3,000 men going up to see him. And the, the story is in relation to, to the seven years coming to an end. 
him wanting to be with his the the one that he hated as Leah and we know from the story over in John that then it would be the time of the Holy Ghost that would be released as soon as he left and then it would be the beginning of the 14 years or what we know is the beginning of tribulation so what do they want to do they want to bind him up and bring him to them and there were 3000 men sound interesting well it is because when you read the story in in the in the sunni muslims which is the majority of of muslims the story of the dajjal in 40 days as the 40 days come to an end look at what it says the Jal will then be chased to the gate of Lod, where he would be captured and killed by Issa bin Miriam. They say, so this is where the Muslims are going to really mess it up in the, in the mind of, of weak, understanding Christians that are going to remain during tribulation. Because they're not going to believe that the, it's the Son of Man here for 40 days. That's what he told us in Luke 17, that he's going to be rejected. Okay? In fact, in relation to what's going on here and in relation to what they say about the Dajjal, what does Jesus say is going to happen to himself during these 40 days? But first, must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation? He must suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. Look at what it says here. It says that he's going to be captured. Now, they say he's going to be killed. I don't believe he's going to be killed. That's just more of the enemy talk. But they say that it's Issa bin Miriam. Issa bin Miriam is who they call Jesus, brothers and sisters. This Issa is Jesus of Mary. Okay, the son of Mary. Of course, this isn't going to be him. This is going to be the false prophet. So they're saying it's the false prophet. So you see, their loving, caring Jesus guy is going to kill this Dajjal guy. But you see what's happening? What's happening with the imagery of Samson? Let us bind you and bring you to him. Well, when does this happen? At the end of 40 days. Now, do I think the false prophet is going to kill him? No. But what's going to happen at the end of 40 days? Well, the group that were workers with Christ are going to leave with Christ at the end of those 40 days and go to heaven like Simeon from Luke chapter 2. That's what's going to take place. He's not actually going to be killed. This is, you know, you can say the, the propaganda of the enemy that this is going to happen. But it says that he's going to be captured and brought to them. Well, what happens with, with Samson in the type and shadow of Samson? Well, it's the end of 40 days because he's going to be with his bride. He's going to go into her which means it's the time of the end of 40 days. But what happens? He can't. He gets bound up and he gets brought to them. And what was the story within it? What, what, how many people went? Well, we know that if it's the time at the end of 40 days and he's brought bound and we know that John chapter 7 is the end of tabernacles and it's the end of the 40 days, we were told that the Holy Ghost would go out next. We know the Holy Ghost only goes out for a moment, right? To anoint those that believed in Christ. That's why we see that also in, in Genesis chapter 8. But it's what? It's also the reference of the 3,000 people at the time of the Holy Ghost. What happened when the Holy Ghost went out, just as we're told, at the end of tabernacles, when the 40 days are over, the Holy Ghost goes out and what's it, what ends up happening? 3,000, right? 3,000 men are delivered. Where is it? Right? There it is, right here. And that same day, 3,000 souls were saved. So you have this perfect type and shadow. Again, to complete the picture given in Judges chapter 15. Are you going to try and tell us that we don't understand what's being revealed here? 
anybody who thinks that hasn't been paying attention. You see, I know the stats of the videos. I know my videos are long. That's because they're teaching lessons. They're teaching of the revelation of scripture. They're not just, here's a date and here's a date and, oh, this one and this one to that. This is the revelation. And I know from the stats that something might have 4,000 views, but I know only 1,000 are watching the whole video. So how many are really getting it? Probably the same as the numbers, the approximate numbers of those over in the forum. It's about a thousand people. Everybody else wants to criticize what they haven't yet taken the time to see and to comprehend for the, for themselves. Download the book. It's free. You can read it at your own pace if you don't like the longer videos. But we're at a time now that you're going to want to read the book quickly. <laughs> because we're coming up to the very end of the end where the 40 days will equal to the end of the 70th year. There's no other option, guys. I want let this sink in for a moment. In all of human history, and from the time when John was in Patmos and wrote the book of Revelation, knowing that Daniel in the connection to 70 years is connected to John at Patmos, it was written after Christ and after the Gospels. It was written after the destruction of Jerusalem in, in 70 AD. No other point in all of human history until Israel came back to be a nation again. Is there ever going to be another 70 of which if the simple understanding of counting just the 70 years was true? This would have already all begun. But knowing the truth of the revelation from Scripture that it was plus three years and the understanding of the two different houses, there is no other time in the eternity of human history where this will ever again come to pass. Ever. So I pray, brothers and sisters, I pray that this reaches your heart. I pray that you pray about it, that you seek the Lord and ask the Spirit to reveal it to you. Because this is it. We are in the it of the it. There is nothing beyond this final 50 to 40 day count that will bring us to the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles. I love you, brothers and sisters. God bless you and God bless your families. I'm looking forward to meeting with you. I'm looking forward to a big ministry revealed hug and to remind each and every one of you, we're gonna sit in the back of the room and we're gonna wait for the Lord, if he so choose, to call those forward that he may call forward not to be sitting and rushing to the front, only to be told to move to the back. We're gonna be obedient to his word and what he said. And that's what it's all about, brothers and sisters, our obedience to him, to love and to watch and to pray and to diligently seek him and to be baptized in his name, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins and the receiving of the free gift of the Holy Ghost. I love you guys. God bless you. And we will see you very, very soon. Bye for now.